Hey guys, it's Frank from GearCouch.com. We are here at Euroblast 2015 and I have the pleasure to talk to David Maxim Micic. How are you? Hello. Um, awesome. Awesome. Awesome, yeah. Still kind of tired from the trip. Okay. And we had two shows yesterday and today, so I'm really, really tired, but I'm feeling great, yeah. You just said it, you, had, you guys had two shows. Yeah. Uh, not only did you play with Destiny Potato a couple of uh, minutes ago, you came back from stage. Yeah. But yesterday we pretty much experienced the world premiere. Yeah. You playing stuff from your uh, Bilo series. Yeah. How much effort was it to, um, to actually rehearse for that, to prepare for that? Well, we had rehearsals for three weeks, but not every day because, you know, and we actually had only one rehearsal where we were like, everyone were, you know, in one room. Yeah. And that was like a few days ago because everyone has their, you know, job, school, whatever, you know, so it's really hard to get all seven people in one place and just, you know, of course, do it. So it was kind of, you know, it was a surprise even for us, I guess, <laughs> what will happen. And it was pretty surprising. Uh, but it was nice. Yeah. It was okay. Yeah. Cool. Um, uh, most people know, but for those who don't know, you're not only writing uh, all the songs as well, well, for Destiny Potato and for the Bido stuff, but you're also uh, producing them. So you're mixing the stuff yeah. yourself, you're recording everything, and you're even doing the mastering process. Yeah. Um, was that kind of a learning curve for you? Or did you have like professional advice, maybe from some kind of a teacher or something? Um, for the producing side of everything, I'm pretty exactly. much self-taught. Okay. Yeah, I'm 100% self-taught because um, when I went to Berkeley, I wanted to do music production, but to have that major there, I had to finish some math classes, which I didn't want to do, because I ran away from all <laughs> that, you know, to just do music or whatever. And actually, it's interesting, it was a really important turning point for me over there, because I wanted to do music production, and when I spoke to some teachers there, they told me that it might better be to take music synthesis classes. Mm -hmm. Music synthesis is more focused on, you know, home studio environment and, you know, that kind of thing that, you know, today is a normal thing. Mm -hmm. But back then it was like, you know, something that will happen. And they told me, like, try not to do music production because that way you'll just work in a big studio for someone for years. You'll just, you know, do the cables, fix something whatever okay. this way you can you know just buy your computer you know buy some instruments for you know home studio equipment and it's much much better yeah. but I took that advice and I decided to go and do the composition major and music production was something I you know I wanted to do myself because I always knew how I want my music to sound and didn't want to involve many, you know, sites, you know, third party yeah. producers or, or engineers or whatever. So it was it was a long learning process and I'm still learning a lot every day on the internet from, you know, colleagues, friends and yeah. it's fun. <laughs> it's a lot of fun, yeah. And on top of that, uh, you also do the distribution of your music uh, completely by yourself. Yeah. Um, is that it seems to be a lot of musicians do that these days. Do you think it's like the ultimate future um, of the music industry, so to speak? Um, or do you think something might change? We might go back to the good old days where labels like uh, spread money and everything. What's your take on that? Well, I think labels will be there for, for a long time because some things are much easier with labels. But there's a lot you can, you know, accomplish just by yourself mm. or with your, you know, friends in the band and everything, especially if you have good contacts and all. But labels are really good for, for some things, you know, taking care of things you don't have to take care about, mm -hmm. you know, focus on writing music, doing the best possible performance and all that. So I see labels, you know, do pretty well in the future. Uh, well, 
who knows what you know further future brings but yeah, for now I think they are important but not as before obviously because there's internet there's home studio environments where you can you know, exactly do everything yourself and I think that's also really important you know which brings me to the nerdy uh, kind of things the nerdy yes. stuff of this interview Hit me. Uh, gear <laughs> Gear, wow. You are well <laughs> famous now for a very unique guitar you're playing uh, from Gorilla Guitars, is that yes, correct? Yes, Wood Gorilla. Wood Gorilla. Yeah. Um, tell me a little bit about that. How did this come into existence? Oh, well, um, I know a few musicians from my hometown who played, you know, Wood Gorilla instruments. And the guy behind Wood Gorilla is... Uh, he's uh, basically a bass uh, guitar player player and mm -hmm. maker but he also works on you know electric guitars and I wanted to meet him and talk about you know making a guitar or something so yeah. the first guitar we made was that crazy double neck thing and he really loved you know the collaboration we had so he decided to make you know more guitars for me and then we you know made you know something I felt like it's you know fitting my style of playing and okay. and everything. So it's it's a really good relationship with him. He's a really small you know handcraft. He does everything by hand. Yeah, you know, all the it's frets. a very small workshop, right? Small, small, yeah. small workshop. It's really unique. Um, if you ask me, would I recommend it to people? Um, yes. Okay. If you. Um, it's kind of you know strange because he's an artist yeah. as well and the first time you know that painted guitar when I when I went to see it for the first time and I'm entering his room and the guitar was some candy green color really awful okay I didn't even ask him for that but he was <laughs> like oh man I have this new color I painted it and he was like so into it you know you know like yeah. look at this color and I'm like uh it's awful. <laughs> <laughs> so, and then I decided, like, okay, let's just do, you know, let's just put some paints on it, and it should be fine. So yeah. he he wants <clears throat> to have freedom of his own. Okay, it's interesting, you know, interesting in that way. So if you want to uh, have something that you, you know, if you're not a perfectionist, you don't want to give him like straight, you know, forward, you know, instructions what yeah. to do. You know? He's not the guy for you. But if you want to surprise yourself, he's amazing. And okay. he makes amazing sounding instruments and really great play playable instruments. Yeah. And uh, what other uh, gear do you use in the studio and, and live? Um, I'm using XFX mm -hmm. from Fractal Audio. Um, I had, you know, uh, I always played guitar processors. I actually never played a real guitar amp. Okay. I never recorded a real guitar amp. Okay. I played guitar amp only once in my life, live. That was in Italy. Mm -hmm. It was fun. And you liked it? <laughs> I liked it, yeah. Okay. It was pretty powerful, but I had to wear earplugs because I would be deaf. <laughs> yeah, okay. No, of course. <laughs> yeah, but I'm a, I'm a huge fan. I'm a 21st century child, I guess. Oh, and. Yeah. I really like the you know new technology and it sounds amazing. It's not that romantic, I guess, but it's really practical for me because I have more time to focus on writing music and less time to care about you know mic positioning and all that, that stuff. That's true. That's yeah. true. Which is probably the reason I have you know I have so much energy to put out so much music. You know. If it wasn't to that technology, I'd be probably was wasting a lot of time, you know, yeah. making up. And I have nothing against it, but it's not my thing. You know? Okay, it's definitely my, not my thing. I also uh, play. I also work with Dunlop. Mm -hmm. um, it's an amazing relationship with them. I mean, the most uh, most of the people I work with, I really like to connect with them on a personal level. Yeah, know? sure. It's not... I've been approached by, you know, some really cool guitar companies and some amp companies and whatnot, but, you know, the thing that really 
brings me to the company is you know the relation yeah the relation with the with the people from the company and just recently i got approached by steinberg oh they make cubase yeah and i've been working on cubase for since i was five years old that's cool yeah so it's probably the most um emotional you know relation i'll, I'll have yeah in the future cool because of that and uh, it's awesome. I work with Unlop. I also work with, work with uh, Bias. Yeah. Yeah. Positive Grid. Yeah. They're awesome. Yeah. They're cool. awesome guys and they, you know, just keep you updated on everything they do and ask you for your thoughts and they then they fix whatever you think it's important to fix in their products. It's a great relation and I mean, everyone I work with are awesome people. Chris from Unlop, of course. Yeah. You know, everyone. Amazing, yeah. yeah. Um, you've recently released two uh, really brilliant albums, Ego Thanks. and Eco, <laughs> yeah. which uh, if you guys don't have it, you definitely have to get it. Um, what's coming up next? What's what's your, your plan for the rest of the year? Uh, um, what's coming up? I'm working on Alexandra Djelmer's solo album, mm -hmm. solo EP actually. Yeah. It'll have like five, six songs. It's more pop rock oriented so it's really relaxing to work on it and her mm -hmm. songs are awesome okay i really love them for those of you who don't know she's the singer in destiny potato yeah. and in, in Bilo or bylo series and that's what i'm working on at the moment we have to finish that and then i'll start recording destiny potato with the guys which is you know the whole album is demoed already mm -hmm. it's you know just recording and doing working on some details and all that and then promoting yeah it should be out in april next year okay that's the plan because april next year is the birthday of our band five years yeah since we started officially working so it's pretty exciting you know the future is you know interesting i think busy pretty yeah. busy and then bill of four of course i have a lot of music written but I think a lot of it will, you know, just go out. Because recently I listened to some of the work and then, you know... Because I started working on Bill of Four before I started working on Eco and Eco. Oh, is that true? Yeah. Okay. And I wrote like 50% <coughs> of, the, of the album. And then I had this need to, to do something different. So I put Bill of Four aside and then I did Eco and Eco and then few weeks ago I returned to Bill of Four, listened to some tracks and decided that it's not 50% finished but maybe 20% yeah. <laughs> because yeah there were some things I did that I didn't like right now maybe I'll put them back in who knows there's there is material so you know but I, I feel like I want to work you know something different now yeah cool. Ben Dave thanks thanks for your time thanks for Thanks David for having me. me. And um, <laughs> yeah, you guys should definitely check David's stuff out. Uh, I'm gonna put uh, some links in the description of the video. And um, yeah, see you guys soon.